Hey everybody, it's Chris and in this video I'm going to show you a Twitch gaming compilation creator that two friends and I created in 2020. So how does it work? It works by taking some of the top clips for a given game, for example League of Legends, and creates a compilation out of it. And in 2021 we decided to publish it on GitHub where it already got over 125 stars, which is pretty cool. So now I decided to make a video about this program and show you guys how it works. And yeah, it would be super, super cool if you could start on GitHub. So probably we can get it over 200 stars. That would be awesome. Let's start with taking a look how the program works. I've just set it up as described in the setup section in the readme. So let's run it without any argument and see what happens. In the first step, the program generates a token with the API keys that I provided in the setup.py file during the setup. Then we get a warning that we have no gamedetection.h5 file in the folder and that the program can't do gameplay detection. Why would we need something like this? Well, often people clip sections of a stream where the streamer said or did something funny without actually playing a game. And if you just want to see good gaming highlights, you might find such clips pretty boring. But if you're okay with having those clips, just ignore the warning. Otherwise, I'll show you later in the video how to download or even create the game detection h5 file for the game of your choice. In the next step, the program creates some folders where we can find the results after execution. It then uses the token that was generated in the first step to perform an authentication which is necessary to download the clips from Twitch. Afterwards, the program starts downloading clips until a condition is met. The condition can be either a defined number of clips or a video length. More on that later. Next, it loads and saves some metadata like the streamer name about the downloaded clips. Then we get a warning about invalid API keys and that it cannot find a valid playlist ID. As long as you're not interested in automated compilation numbering like compilation hashtag 1, compilation hashtag 2 and so on, you can ignore the warning. And if you're interested, check out the comment in the setup.py to get started. After the warning, the program starts to create the compilation. It also creates a thumbnail, title and description for YouTube based on the provided metadata. Why all this additional YouTube stuff? If you check out the readme on GitHub, you can see that we used the program to operate a fully autonomous YouTube channel for 100 days as an experiment. That's why it's in there. Now let's check out the output that the program generated for the current run we can see that it created two folders. The raw clips folder consists of all downloaded clips without any editing applied, while the compilation folder consists of multiple files that were generated during program execution. Let's go through them one by one. The metadata.json file contains information about each clip that made it into the compilation. The program generates this file when downloading the clips and then uses it to provide information like the streamer name when creating the compilation. Then we have the description underscore youtube.txt file which is based on the template underscore youtube.txt file in the assets slash templates folder. If we look at the file we can see that it uses many placeholders. Those placeholders are filled with information that we provide in a metadata underscore config.json file. In our case, that file is in the assets slash Fortnite folder. If we take a closer look at the generated description, we can see that it also adds information from the metadata.json file. For example, the featured clips and streamers, as well as correct timestamps for the clips in the compilation. The next file that we take a look on is the YouTube underscore title dot JSON, which consists of information provided in the metadata underscore config dot JSON file. Not much else to say about this one. So let's check out the thumbnail that was generated. The chosen image is more or less random, but there's some logic that increases the chances of having a thumbnail that actually shows something interesting. 
Then on the left we have an overlay showing the game icon and the current compilation number. The overlay can be specified with the overlay underscore thumbnail.png file in the assets folder, while the game logo is defined with the game underscore logo.png file in one of the child folders. In the upper right corner is an emoji to make the thumbnail a bit more catchy. The emoji itself is chosen randomly from one of the images in the assets slash emojis folder. That's it for the thumbnail. Last but not least, let's check out the compilation itself. So let's pause here for now and see what's happening. Down here we can see that the streamer name is added to provide attribution to the streamer. Then we have a logo in the top right area which can be changed by updating the watermark.png file for a chosen game in the assets folder. You can also remove the file if you don't want any logo to be shown there. Let's rush through the compilation to get a sense for how it looks like. Pretty boring, right? It's because often the clips with the most views are some huge streamers saying something funny or experiencing something weird. We provide multiple ways to address this problem. The first and probably most important is using a neural network to filter out the clips that don't show actual gameplay footage. If you head to GitHub, you can download two trained neural networks by clicking on the releases section and downloading sample underscore files dot zip. If you unzip it, you can find a game detection dot h5 file for the game Fortnite and one for the game League of Legends. Just place it in your game folder under assets and the in-game detection warning during runtime should disappear. If you want to train a neural network for a different game, check out my gameplay detection with a neural network video where I explain everything you need to know. Another way to improve the compilation quality are the runtime arguments. You can, for example, use the number of clips argument to specify how many clips the compilation should consist of. Alternatively, you can also specify that your compilation should be x minutes long with the min underscore length argument. Then you can filter the time span with the time span argument to create an hourly, daily, weekly or monthly compilation. Another cool argument is max creator clips, which lets you specify that the compilation shouldn't feature a creator more than x times. And last but not least, we can specify a limit for how long each clip must be with the min clip duration argument. If a clip is too short, it will not be included in the compilation. The third and last way that might help in improving the quality or preventing content claims is the blocklist.json in the root folder. Just put the streamer name in there if you don't want to include any clips from him or her. We already added the streaming channels TFU and Riot Games because they do not allow using the clips on YouTube. Now you should have a good overview about how to use the program. I'm not going through the code in this video. If you have any questions about it, feel free to join the Bot Academy Discord server and ask there. If you want to modify the code to suit your specific needs, I recommend forking the repository so that you have your own copy. If you're still here, I guess you enjoyed the video. So please make sure to actually like it so that the video gets more attention. If you want to see more content, feel free to subscribe and if you want to get notified when I upload, make sure to hit the notification bell. Thanks and I hope to see you in the next video.